Those who control the United States government are up to something big. In this video, we're going to give you a glimpse of what's going on. We're going to present a collection of evidence from mainstream sources, all of which will be listed in the description below, and then we're going to connect the dots. The unified picture that you'll see once those dots are connected will be terrifying for some people, especially if you've never been exposed to this kind of information before. But that's not the goal of this video. The goal of this video is to motivate you to take action, and quickly. But that's only going to happen if you understand what's really at stake. Over the past decade, the U.S. government has been radically transformed. These transformations began with the Patriot Act passed by Bush in 2001, and they were further consolidated by Obama with the NDAA of 2012 and 2013. The contents of these laws were ominous warnings of what was coming, but for the average American, the changes that were taking place had little effect on their lives. The introduction of the Department of Homeland Security and the invasive new policies of the TSA and airports were uncomfortable, but for most of the population, it wasn't worth resisting. We heard stories of the government listening to people's phone conversations and searching houses without warrants, but this was all behind the scenes and it didn't really affect the population at large, so the outcry was limited. Occasionally, the mainstream media mentioned the extraordinary rendition and torture of suspected terrorists in military prisons, but of course these political pundits did their best to convince you that this was all justified and necessary for your security. Then Obama came onto the scene promising hope and change, but it didn't take long for him to start showing his true colors when he renewed the Patriot Act and backed out of his promise to close Guantanamo. When Obama signed the NDAA giving the military the power to detain anyone, including U.S. citizens indefinitely and without trial, and when he claimed the right to kill U.S. citizens without trial domestically or abroad, there was some outrage. But this outrage faded as new headlines pulled your attention away. On the surface, it might have started to seem like none of this was going to affect your life, so you put it out of your mind. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed that things were changing little bit by little bit. Cameras started appearing everywhere. The police began to be militarized. The drones began to patrol the skies domestically. But behind the scenes, something even bigger was afoot. Biometric information began to be collected from nonviolent protesters when arrested, from all immigrants entering the country, from school children without their parents' permission, and even from the public at large without their knowledge. The government has been collecting that information, and compiling it into the largest biometrics database in the world. This database, referred to as NGI, be online in 2014. These laws have been building the mechanisms for a totalitarian police state piece by piece, and now they're attempting to put the final measures in place. The new proposed immigration bill called the Border Security, Economic Opportunity, and Immigration Modernization Act, which is up for debate this summer of 2013, adds the two final elements. The first is a provision for a federal employment database that all workers will have to be approved through in order to get a job. This database will tie into other government databases at the discretion of the DHS, and the DHS is given the authority to unilaterally increase the identification requirements at will, and to demand that these standards be enforced as a condition of employment. What this means is that once this is in place, if the DHS decides that all ID cards must contain IRIS scan information and fingerprints, you'll have to give it to them, or you won't be allowed to work. This in itself is a major power grab, but the full implications of the NGI database combined with this new employee identification system far beyond the workplace. In the immigration bill, there's a provision to set up a biometric scanning system in all international airports for departures. This system, which is proposed to roll out over the next six years, is initially just targeting immigrants. But once the system is in place, it would be trivial to start using it for the entire public. Such a switch wouldn't even need to be announced, since developments in biometric technology enable identification from a distance. They can do this with software connected to security cameras using facial recognition, infrared iris scanners, and even the rhythm of one's walk. Identification by one's unique patterns of movement, referred to as gait recognition, can even be used with drones. Once the biometrics verification system is set up at all ports of entry and departure, connecting this to the NGI database, existing surveillance cameras, and domestic drones to track the movements of ordinary citizens anywhere and everywhere, including wilderness areas, could happen without any outwardly visible changes and without any new laws. One of the most significant hallmarks of a police state is the establishment of systems to control who can leave a country. Such systems are often used to prevent political dissidents from escaping. This is often combined with intensive surveillance internally, both of communications and personal activities, and a brutal police force that operates above the law. Never in history has any dictatorship in the world had a system of surveillance, tracking, and exit management as sophisticated and powerful as the one the United States is about to finish setting up. Never. The Soviets had elaborate borders with double barbed wire, minefields, and guard towers, but none of this compares to a border patrolled by high-tech drones linked to the world's largest biometric database, with biometric scanners at every point of entry or departure. If they get this through, they will have truly outdone George Orwell. But the government would never abuse this power, would they? After all, America is the world's greatest beacon of hope and freedom, right? Well, the fact that the U.S. government has already established a massive and secretive no-fly list, and the fact that anti-war activists have already been placed on this list for political reasons, 
should be considered a warning sign. In its current form, it's already impossible for citizens to find out if their names are on the list, and there's no process for getting your name removed from the list. What happens when the no-fly list becomes the no-leave list? So here's the real question. Do you trust the U.S. government with this power? Do you actually believe that their primary goal is to protect you? If so, you haven't been paying attention. In 2013, we've been given a little glimpse of what's coming to America. In the Dorner case, we had a man accused of murder and condemned by the media as guilty based on a typed manifesto that he had supposedly written, even though there was no real evidence that Dorner had written the manifesto at all. A nationwide manhunt was put into motion, whole highways were roadblocked and cars were searched, police moved through neighborhoods searching hundreds of houses without warrants, and drones were said to have been deployed to hunt for him. And in the end, the police intentionally set fire to the building that he was supposedly hiding in, burning the man to death. The police initially denied that they set the fire, but later they were forced to admit that they had, due to a police scanner audio that got out to the public. And they got away with it. No one in the mainstream media or the government even blinked. Then we saw the Boston bombing case where two suspects were hunted down with equally tenuous evidence. Even though photos from the event showed a number of individuals that were clearly involved, these other individuals were never mentioned by the authorities or the mainstream media. All attention was placed on the Sarnoff brothers as if they were already proven guilty. The manhunt to catch these two boys was unprecedented. The DHS rolled down the streets with military-grade armored vehicles searching house to house with no warrants, instituting an improvised form of martial law on the fly, just like that, because they could. The Sarnoff brothers were finally caught, and they were shown the footage being arrested alive and well. Yet somehow, hours later, they were both shot full of holes. The older brother died, the other was left unable to speak, and the government and the mainstream media were silent. But the story didn't end there. Ibrahim Todashev, a friend of the Sarnoff brothers, was brutally murdered by the FBI just weeks later. He was shot six times in the body and once in the back of the head. Murdered in cold blood, execution stopped. Todashev was unarmed, but the agents claimed that he attacked them. It's hard to imagine what an unarmed man could do to deserve a bullet in the back of the head. All of this establishes a new precedent, where the US government chases down suspects with militarized manhunts, instituting martial law on a whim, and acting as judge, jury, and executioner in the field. They kill with impunity based on flimsy or non-existent evidence, all with the support of a mainstream media circus that televises the whole event for your entertainment. This in itself is a chilling shift in tone, but believe it or not, there's more. A Department of Defense document entitled Internment and Resettlement Operations, also known as FM3-39.40, was leaked this year revealing detailed plans for the establishment of military internment camps within the United States. The document clearly calls for the collection of social security numbers, meaning it will be used for U.S. citizens. And it even has diagrams for three different types of camps that are to be implemented. These diagrams show interrogation rooms, guard towers spread throughout the facilities, and double barbed wire surrounding the camps. We covered this document in detail in our video entitled Leaked Document, Military Internment Camps in the U.S. to be Used for Political Dissidents. But wait, there's more! The Department of Homeland Security has recently gone on a bullet buying spree, purchasing over 1.6 billion rounds in just a few months. And even after the mainstream news started covering it, the DHS ordered more bullets. A large percentage of these bullets are hollow points and buckshot and cannot be used by the military. And the DHS only operates domestically. The DHS claims these bullets are to be used for training purposes, but anyone who knows anything about guns knows that you don't use hollow points for training. Hollow points are much more expensive than FMJ. Furthermore, this is more ammunition per DHS officer than U.S. soldiers have been using in the war. In parallel, we had Senator Colburn release a paper about the wasteful spending in the DHS, in which he pointed out a bizarre training exercise where the DHS practiced shooting civilians who were disguised as zombies. Coburn focused on the spending aspect, but if you watch the actual footage and put it into context with everything else, the real purpose of these training exercises is much more disturbing. to fire on unarmed civilians. The zombie makeup is just a smokescreen. Believe it or not, this is only a fraction of the evidence that we can present here. There is much more that you'll find if you do your own research. 
As outlandish as this picture may look to you if this is the first time you've encountered this information, the reality is that from a historical perspective, nothing we're showing here is unusual at all. Countries slip into totalitarian dictatorships all the time. You've just been conditioned to believe that it could never happen in America. But it can happen in America. And it is happening. It's happening right now. There are three ways of dealing with what you've just seen. You can pretend that this is all a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, but to do that, you'll have to ignore the extensive documentation given from mainstream sources. Some might call this skepticism, but the more accurate term is willful ignorance. Option number two, you can cower in fear and do everything in your power to avoid attracting the attention of the government. Of course, that's your prerogative, but what are you going to say to your children and grandchildren when they ask you what you did when this went down? Or, option number three, you can fight to stop this. The powers that be have an Achilles heel, and that's the enforcers. These DHS officers are your fellow Americans. Most of them are not evil. They're just misinformed and perhaps a little brainwashed by their training. You can reach out to them, make friends with them, show them this information. You can reach out to police and military, to current serving and veterans alike. Make them understand what's coming. Make them realize that they've been tricked and that they are being used to destroy their own country. If the powers that be lose control of their enforcement arm, it will be game over for these criminals. Now you may not know anyone in the armed force, but you can still help by getting this message to as many people as possible. Post this on Facebook, on Twitter, on your blog. Share it with your friends via email. Download these videos and hand them out on DVD. The more people we reach, the more likely it is we'll reach someone in a chain of command who's in a position to stop this. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to Stormclouds Gathering on YouTube. For updates and bonus content, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash stormcloudsgathering. On Twitter, at Collapse Updates. On Google+, you can find us by doing a search for Stormclouds Gathering, and our website is stormcloudsgathering.com.